So you move jobs across borders, you move jobs across oceans, and why? Well, the idea was to avoid labor unions. The idea was to avoid workers who are organizing to try to raise their level of subsistence, to get a decent wage so that they can live comfortably. And the idea was also to, to avoid the rich labor laws that have resulted uh, as, a, as a result of the United States of people's uh, fighting for their civil rights, and most importantly, the environment. Because we have a strong environmental movement that started in the 1970s and challenged corporations to, you know, what are you doing to communities? What's happening with communities? You can't just go dump battery acid in a stream. You can't do your number anywhere in a pond. And so the environmental laws are very important uh, here in the United States, and corporations want to avoid that. So what's happening is that you have outsourcing. So let's go to um, film clip number 12, and let's appreciate how unemployment has nothing to do with immigration, how unemployment has everything to do with outsourcing. In one of America's most economically depressed cities resides the world's largest producer of home appliances. Whirlpool Corporation is headquartered in Benton Harbor, Michigan, where 60% are unemployed, 90% live in poverty, and per capita income is roughly $10,000. The citizens of Benton Harbor are living from one day to the next. They're very poor and they're very disheartened. I mean, there's been very little effort on the part of Whirlpool that runs everything to try to um, involve the community. In 2009, Whirlpool received a $19.3 million grant from the federal government, in part, to create jobs. I think our U.S. workforce, uh, certainly uh, factory workforce, if you will, is, is, is the best among the world. So we are very confident in the future of U.S. manufacturing for our kind of products. One year later, the corporation received nearly $20 million from the state of Michigan to expand its facility, which now serves as a gateway into Benton Harbor. It's good for the community, good for the state, and good for your business as well. I'd say there's a real art to that. But as the U.S.-based corporation has grown globally, more jobs have been outsourced to countries demanding less wages. Today, the former blue-collar community of Benton Harbor remains a victim of America's deindustrialization and growing poor population. Whirlpool has 71,000 employees around the globe, but no longer manufactures home products in its hometown. It still remains a recipient of U.S. state and federal stimulus funding. Whirlpool just closed the factory, and that hurt my business, my little business. I lost a lot of clients. This is their home base, and it always has been. And in the beginning of the large development, they promised us that they would always be. Due to the recession, the corporate behemoth of home appliances hasn't paid U.S. income tax since 2008. By 2010, nearly 99% of Benton Harbor residents were receiving food stamps, while Whirlpool banked approximately $18 billion in annual sales. I think I've purchased my last Whirlpool appliance. I don't even think I'll call for a repair because too often and for too long, those that have gotten rich has forgotten who's helped them to get there and they're willing to step on us. And that just doesn't sit well with my soul. A soul living in one of America's poorest cities, clothed in poverty and accessorized in corporate success. Marina Portnaya, RT, New York. Now, one of the things that we uh, are learning uh, since the 1980s is this notion of neoliberalism in the Washington Consensus, which is known as uh, deregulation, okay? uh, deindustrialization. There's been a wholesale move in search of lower wages. There's been a wholesale move in search of the most docile unions. There's been a wholesale move in terms of finding the least regulation. So whenever you see workers in a host country get the jobs that used to be in the United States, well, of course, they benefit from job creation. 
but also it's done at the expense of their rights. And if they try to organize into unions, if they challenge the system, then the companies just move to find another country that will give them the profits they so desire. Wall Street does this. So when you take a look at Maquiladoras, Maquilas, right here on the border, on the U.S.-Mexico border, uh, this is where United States corporations outsource their most labor-intensive work. And of course, Mexico tries to provide them a business-friendly environment to attract and preserve what are scarce jobs. But you see, that competition that's, that's, that's been happening in the third world, that competition, well, it's now in the United States. Just take a look at your neighborhoods. Just take a look and see what's happening to your neighborhoods. Because the high-profit, cheap product model is here on every corner. That's right. Malwar, your source of cheap plastic crap, is right around your corner.